subscribe our channel, press the bell icon for latest videos. Hi friends, here in this video we are going to see problem number 1 on deflection of beams that I am going to solve it by using Macaulay's method. So let's get started. Here the question is, calculate the maximum deflection of the beam as shown in figure, the diagram of the beam is given. Take capital E that is Young's modulus, 200 GPA that is Giga Pascal and I is the moment of inertia for this beam material. It is 1.2 into 10 raised to 9 mm raised to 4 and it is mentioned we have to use the Macaulay's method here. Now how to start solving this problem? First of all, when I look at this beam, it is a simply supported beam having supports at A and B. At A it is hinge support and whenever we have hinge support at that time there would be two reactions when I remove the support over here. So I will write it into the solution part. Drawing the beam again. Now, at A since it is hinge support, at the hinge we have two reactions that is horizontal and vertical reaction but here in this problem no horizontal forces are there. So horizontal reaction HA would be 0, then there is vertical reaction RA which need to be calculated and at the other end where we have the roller support there only vertical reaction would be there that is RB. Now the first step would be to get these support reactions that is RA and RB. For that, I will write down it is step number 1. It is calculation of support reactions wherein summation of Fy is equal to 0 that is the summation of all vertical forces are equal to 0 wherein upward forces are treated positive and downward forces are taken as negative. So here we have RA and RB both are upward so plus RA plus RB 100 and 200 are downward so minus 100 minus 200 is equal to 0. So therefore RA plus RB would be equal to 300 kilo newton and this I will keep it as the first equation. Then I would be taking the moments at point A. So here summation of moment about A is equal to 0 and the convention is clockwise moments are positive and anti-clockwise moments are negative. So therefore, this would be minus RB into total distance which is 10 next 100 into 5 that is clockwise. So it would be plus and then 200 into distance 7.5 this is also plus is equal to 0 and from this I will get the value of RB and it comes out to be 200 kilo Newton. After getting RB I will put it in equation 1 to get RA. So RA comes out to be 100 kilo Newton. I will just write the reactions onto this beam. Next, after getting the reaction that is step number 1 has been completed, 
in step number two i am going to start the macaulay's method and in that macaulay's method we are going to get or start it with the help of a differential equation so step number second using macaulay's method at first what we have to do here is starting from the left hand support because this i'll keep it as a reference throughout from left hand i'm going to take a section which is very far away from the left hand section that is a and the distance of this section from a is x and here i'll call this section as section xx it is very far away from point A and close to point B. Next, in the Macaulay's method, there is a governing differential equation which is EI d square y by dx square is equal to m and this m is nothing but the bending moment which I am going to take it at section xx which I have taken just now. And again, the convention here is clockwise moments are plus and anticlockwise moments are minus that is negative now taking the moments about section xx when i see over here there is ra so this ra when i take the moment at x it comes out to be in the clockwise direction so that would be plus ra into x Next, this 100 into, it is coming out to be in anti-clockwise direction, so that would be negative. Now, the distance between the section xx and 100 kN force is, it is x minus 5, because this much is the distance between the two sections, x minus 5. So, it is minus 100 into x minus 5 then similarly for 200 kilo newton force this would also be acting in anti-clockwise direction negative and the distance between section xx and this force is x minus 7.5 then here i'll put the value of ra Now, here this equation is having the term EI d square y by dx square. So, I would be integrating this equation and after the integration, I would get here dy by dx. So, I will mention here that integrating once we get EI will remain as it is d square y by dx square will become dy by dx is equal to this 100 into x would become 100 x the integration is x square by 2 now plus c1 the constant of integration would be added then here we have minus 100 x minus 5 whole square divided by 2 and here the integration would be minus 200 into x minus 7.5 whole square divided by 2. So, this is the answer of the first integration and therefore ei dy by dx will become this would be 50 x square after the cancellation plus c1 this would be minus 50 x minus 5 whole square this would be after cancellation minus 100 x minus 7.5 whole square now this equation i am highlighting this would be equation second 
also called as the slope equation because the term dy by dx is nothing but the slope then integrating this equation second again integrating again we get ei will remain as it is dy by dx now after the integration it would become y is equal to 50 x square the integration would be x cube by 3 then it is plus c1 so it would become plus c1 into x then again since i am integrating it for the second time another constant c2 would be added then minus 50 x minus 5 whole square will become x minus 5 whole cube divided by 3 minus 100 into x minus 7.5 whole square will become whole cube by 3 now after reaching up till this stage i will highlight this equation as well keeping it as the third equation and this equation is the deflection equation because y is called as the deflection of the beam now i need to find out these constants c1 and c2 and for that i'll apply the boundary conditions Now what are these boundary conditions? When x is equal to 0 because we are measuring x from the left hand side. So here when the distance x is 0, deflection at this point A is 0 because it is supported. So the first boundary condition is at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Next the second boundary condition when x is total that is 10 meters again y at this location that is at point b is 0 because again it is supported like at a it was supported so at x is equal to 10 meter y is equal to 0 now putting these boundary conditions respectively in equation 3 remember whenever you have to find the constants c1 and c2 you all have to put the values of the boundary conditions in the deflection equation and not in the slope equation so here i will say putting the respective boundary conditions in third equation so when i put the first boundary condition that is at x is equal to 0 y is 0 so left hand side becomes 0 because y is 0 and then x is equal to 0 when i put it over here this value would be 0 again here x is 0 so this term also becomes 0 plus c2 a very important hint whenever you are putting the value of x if you are getting the answer of this bracket as negative then neglect this term see when i put x is equal to 0 here this would be minus 5 so such term should be neglected in the deflection equation similarly over here when i put x is equal to 0 that would be 0 minus 7.5 again giving a negative answer so these terms are not to be considered in the deflection equation remember so here I am getting C2 value as 0 because we don't consider these terms which are into the bracket that give us 0 or negative sign. Next putting the second boundary condition that is at x is equal to 10 meter y is 0. So therefore again the left hand side becomes 0 and onto the right hand side I will put the value x as 10 plus c1 into x and x is 10 so it is 10 c1 c2 is 0 now again check the bracket here it is 10 minus 5 so positive so i have to consider this bracket 
even on to this term this bracket is giving me a positive answer when i put x equal to 10 so it has to be considered otherwise if the answer would have been negative neglect those brackets so when i solve this i'll get my answer of c1 from this equation as it is minus 1406.62 then once the constants values have been calculated i'll put c1 and c2 in equation number 3 and that would complete the deflection equation putting the constants in the deflection equation so we have onto the left hand side ei into y is equal to 50 x cube by 3 plus it is c1 into x and the c1 answer is minus so it is minus 1406.62 into x c2 is 0 so i am neglecting this term c2 being 0 and then i'll write this equation further So this is equation A which gives us the final deflection equation wherein if we put any value of x into the beam we are going to get the deflection at that location. Now in a similar manner I will write the slope equation which was in equation number second. So here I will just put the value of C1 and get the slope equation. In equation second. So therefore Ei dy by dx is 50x square minus 1406.62 This is equation B and it is the final slope equation. Now once the deflection and slope equation are known, I will see the question what has been asked in the question to find out. In the question they have mentioned we have to calculate the maximum deflection of the beam. Now deflection is maximum at that location where the slope is 0. I will write it over here like an important hint or an important note. So here I have written an important note that deflection would be maximum at that point where slope is equal to 0 and to find that location in equation B I would be equating this slope equation to 0 and with that we are going to get the value of x that is the point of maximum deflection and once we know the value of x we can safely put it in equation number A to get the answer of maximum deflection. So after reaching up till this stage. For maximum deflection that is y max dy by dx is equal to 0. So 
in equation B, I'll get it. The left side would become 0 because dy by dx is 0. Now, we have to just expand this equation. x minus 5 whole square, that is x square minus 10x plus 25 it is 56.25 now how to solve this equation is we are going to expand it get the terms of x square together terms of x together and constant i'll just write the simplification of this equation that is the final form which i am getting here and it is 100x square minus 2000x plus 8281.62 is equal to 0. So here I am getting a quadratic equation and that would give me the two answers. So on solving this equation, we get first x is equal to 5.85 meter or the second value is 14 meter now I have to check out of these two values which one is the correct answer so for that I'll just uh, look into the beam which is given so here the total length of the beam is 10 meter so the answer of x cannot be 14 meter it means this 14 we are not going to consider but the correct answer here is 5.85 meter because this exists within the beam so at x is equal to 5.85 meter from left side or point a there is maximum deflection so therefore put x is equal to 5.85 meter in the final deflection equation which was in equation A. So here the left side of the equation is EI into Y and here I am adding a suffix that is Y max because it is the maximum deflection and putting the values it is 50 into X cube which is 5.85 cube divided by 3 then here also while putting the value just check it x is 5.85 so the brackets which are giving the positive answers are to be considered like here we have 5.85 minus 5 this bracket would be considered but the next bracket which is x minus 7.5 so it would be 5.85 minus 7.5 gives the negative answer so this won't be considered we'll write the equation only up till here so putting the values of x on calculating this right hand side my answer comes out to be 0 0.0204 and this EI would go into the denominator now what about this EI value it is given into the problem so I'll just explain it over here the value of E is given it was 200 GPA gigapascal and I was 1.2 10 raised to 9 mm raised to 4 now this GPA needs to be converted so it would be 200 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square and EI is the multiplication of these two terms so EI would be 200 into 10 raised to 3 into 1.2 
multiplied by 10 raised to 9 so therefore it gives me the answer as 2.4 into 10 raised to 14 Newton mm square and why the unit is Newton mm square because E is in terms of Newton per mm square and when I multiply it with mm raised to 4 mm square and mm square gets cancelled so the term which remains is Newton into mm square now I cannot put this value directly over here because whatever we have considered right from start the forces or reactions were in the form of kilonewton and distances in the form of meter so finally EI value should also be in the form of kilonewton and meter it should not be in the form of newton and mm because all the values are kilonewton and meter which we had taken right from start so what I'll do here is therefore EI would be equal to 2.4 into 10 raised to 14 now first I'll keep newton as it is mm 1 mm is 10 raised to minus 3 meter so this would be 2.4 into 10 raised to 14 newton into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square so it gives me the answer as 240 into 10 raised to 6 newton meter square and now I would be replacing this newton and for that I will divide this by 10 raised to 3 so that would give me the answer in terms of kilo newton so finally EI value would be 240 into 10 raised to 3 kilo newton meter square this value I am going to put over here so it would be 2 so this first term came out to be and the second term and the last term so this was actually divided by EI and after that so the answer which I am getting minus 0 0.0204 is my final answer and that is in that is after dividing by this term and it is in terms of meter so that would give me minus 20.42 mm and therefore I can say that y max is 20.42 mm and this negative sign indicates that the deflection is in the downward direction that is the meaning of this negative sign so as mentioned in the question they had told us to find the maximum deflection we have found the distance that it is 5.85 meter from left hand side where we are getting the maximum deflection value of y max and with this the problem gets completed and just after the completion of the problem just after the completion of the problem if you all find my videos useful and helpful you all can like, share, comment and subscribe and share it amongst your family and friends. Thanks a lot.